Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome back to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to import various script resources, at least the ones that I consider to be the foundation of mod creation, into Mod Organizer 2. So this is going to include getting the vanilla scripts for the game itself, the source files, and it's also going to be the installation of SKC, pretty much an essential these days if you want to create a mod or even play a lot of the mods out there. And then I'm also going to show you how to put other script extension resources in. In this particular instance, it's going to be the Sky UI script sources for things like a mod configuration menu. So let's dive into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get the vanilla game source scripts into Mod Organizer 2. So the reason that we're going to do this is that it actually keeps the data folder nice and clean and it also allows you to see conflicts when you put other mod extensions on top such as a SKSC, a Papyrus Extender, uh, the Sky UI stuff, all of that on top to see if there are any conflicts and what vanilla scripts are actually getting changed by which mods and which resources, which is really, really useful. So what we're going to do is go to our Skyrim directory, go to the data folder, and if you've installed the creation kit, you should see that you've got this scripts.zip folder. Now there was an option that I showed in my video for the latest installation of the creation kit where you actually have the option to extract these. I clicked yes. I should have actually clicked no um, as I've, I've actually now deleted them from here because it makes more sense to load them into Mod Organizer 2. So if you have followed that video and you have got them in here under source, scripts and then all the PSC files, you can go ahead and delete them. They're in here and we're going to put them into Mod Organizer 2 instead. So the way that we're going to do that is by going into Mod Organizer, click to add a new mod, we're going into our directory, we're going into data, and we're going to click on that zip file and click OK. So what you're going to see here, which is incredibly interesting, is that the content of data does not look valid. OK, stop right there just for one second. I made a slight balls up here and didn't realize that that dialog views was in there. We don't care about that. Get rid of that out of there. Um, and then it'll probably not moan. And even if it does still moan, it's fine, but it's probably that dialogue views. Whoops. Carry on. And you know what? It's absolutely right. And the reason for this is that Bethesda made a mistake with Special Edition slash Anniversary Edition, where in the past for Legacy Skyrim, it was scripts with all of the scripts in there, the PEX files, and then within that folder was also the source. You went into source and that had all the PSC files, all of the source files. But what they've gone and done is they've got their folders backwards when it came to their source files. So their normal scripts are still under scripts, but then the source isn't in the scripts folder. So it's actually a scripts folder within a source folder. Hopefully that makes sense. So essentially, Mod Organizer 2 is absolutely correct in that this is wrong. However, it's now technically right when you're modding Special Edition or Anniversary Edition because the Creation Kit is also checking against that incorrect directory. So essentially, you can ignore this. Click OK and click Ignore. Now, I am aware that there may be a way to change it back to the old way, but that would likely cause more confusion and problems with software than it would be worth diving into. It's better just to leave it as it is and then just lay things out this way. As it is when you package up your mod, in theory, it doesn't really matter if you put it the new way or the old way um, because scripts, the compiled scripts remain just in a scripts folder regardless for, for both legacy, SE and even AE. Very, very confusing, but essentially what we want to do, import that scripts for our, ignore the errors, we're all good, we can click on it to enable it. And then if we do a right click and open in Explorer, you'll see that you've got dialogue views there and you've got source scripts and we've got all the PSC files for the source files for the vanilla game scripts. Perfect. Next up, we are going to install SKSC. So this is a script extension mod. It essentially, for those of you that don't know, adds additional functionality to the vanilla game, allowing for way cooler things to be done within mods. 
You may have heard of it before, even if you're not sure what it is. A lot of mods on the Skyrim Nexus and just out there in general heavily rely on SKSC nowadays for that extra functionality. So it's pretty much an, an essential for Skyrim modding at this point, whether it's the installation of mods to use or whether it's the creation of your own. You will find SKSC to be an incredibly useful resource and open so many more doors for you when it comes to modding. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get this installed. Again, this is going to be through Mod Organizer 2 so that we can easily see conflicts and whatnot and manage it and manage the versions, which is really handy. And you'll see here that there are multiple versions of SKSE. So we've got Legacy, essentially, which is what they're calling the classic build. We've got Anniversary Edition build, which is what we're looking at today. And they've also got one for GOG, so Galaxy, good old games. And they've also got the special edition. So that was pre-anniversary edition of the game. And then they've also got one for the VR build. Now, what we're going to be interested in, as I say, is anniversary edition. So I'm going to go ahead, click on that, get that downloaded, show that in my downloads. I'm going to extract this. I'm going to use 7-zip. You can use anything that you like. I'm going to go into that folder and you'll see that we've got a few things here. So the text files, that's just information that we don't really need. We're going to delete them. We've also got the source for SKSE itself. I won't be diving into that. I doubt a lot of you will either. I'm going to delete that. So that leaves us with a DLL and an executable along with data, which has scripts all within it. And it's also got the source. I'll come back to that in a moment. So what we want to do first is get the DLL and the executable, cut that and put it into your Skyrim directory, not into the data folder, just the directory itself main directory. Uh, it looks like I've already got it installed. I'll replace, but essentially you shouldn't have anything there if you've never installed SKC before. So now that I've got that, I want to manage the different versions of the scripts and I want to be able to see those conflicts in Mod Organizer and whatnot. So what I can do is go back into here, go into data, and you'll remember earlier on I mentioned that it's kind of backwards. It's the wrong way around. So you'll see here they've actually put it correctly for SKSC, but if we want to be able to refer to these source files for SKSC and use the functionality for our own mods, we're actually going to want to change this to Bethesda's wrong way, if that makes sense. So I'm going to cut the source out of here. I'm going to go back and then I'm going to paste it into data. Then what I need to do is go into source and all of these files then need to go into a folder within this called scripts. So I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. And then I'm going to do control A to select all, hold down control very carefully here. And then I'm going to click on scripts to unselect that one folder. Then I'm going to drag and drop, or you can do cut and paste. I'm gonna drag and drop into that scripts folder. And now it's laid out as the creation kit understands or the 64 bit creation kit understands, which is for SE and AE. So you'll see now we've got data, source, scripts, and then we've also got just scripts for the PEX files. So if I go back in the data folder, I can either zip up the data folder and sort it in MO, or I'll do what I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to select the source and scripts. And then I'm going to do zipping that up with 7-zip. And I'm going to just rename that. And I'm going to call it SKSC, and the version looks to be 2.2.3. And then just for less confusion, I'm going to put that into my downloads, get rid of everything else. And I'm just going to leave myself with my own zip file here. And I'm going to go into Mod Organizer. You'll see now when I load Mod Organizer at the top here, it's actually got SKSC in as, as an option, so I can load my game with SKSC which if you're going to make use of SKSC for other mods, you'll need to do that. And now I'm going to go ahead and again, similar as I did with the vanilla scripts, add a mod essentially. I'm going to go to my downloads, click on that zip file that I made, hit OK, and then I'm going to name this again. OK. Tick it. And you'll see, as I mentioned about conflicts, you can actually right click one of these, click on information, go on the conflicts tab, and you'll see any conflicts that are happening, which is really, really interesting. So it's normal for SKSC to replace some of the vanilla scripts, um, but this becomes incredibly useful, especially when you start adding more script extension resources on the end of it.
Okay, so next up, I'm going to be looking at the MCM source script, so the Sky UI source scripts for MCM. Uh, MCM stands for Mod Configuration Menu, so if you've ever downloaded mods where you've got these fancy menus uh, that you can sift through and change settings for and whatnot, a lot of mine have the same thing, and you're looking to implement that in one of your own mods, you're going to need this. So again, link in the description for this one. And if you click on the SDK files here, you'll see that there are different versions. We will want the latest one, which is SkyUI SDK 5.1. That will direct you to a Google Drive. Click download at the top right. This may take a little while. It's, it's a bit weird for some reason. Um, but for me, this just sits here for a good, what, 10 seconds or so, and it will eventually download the file. There we go. So I'm going to show in folder again. I'm going to have to unzip this using 7-zip. And we're going to pull off the same trick here. Now we've got examples here. Um, I mean, you might find them useful. Me personally, I don't need them. So I'm going to delete that. And then we've got scripts in here. And you'll see we've got script source again laid out in the correct way. But we're going to need to basically change that like we did before. So I'm going to cut source out, go back, paste it into here, go into source and then make a new folder again called scripts. And I'm going to grab these two, put those into scripts, and that'll sort that. And then I'm going to get source and scripts. And now I'm essentially going to repack this. And I'm going to rename it as well, just slightly. And then I'm going to put that into my downloads and get rid of the other stuff. Oh, hang on. Just made a new one, haven't I? Let's get rid of everything else. Don't need all that. And then go into Mod Organizer. Add new mod. This one here that we've just created. Hit OK. OK. And you can activate that. Open in Explorer. And again, we'll see that we've got what we just added in. And we can refer to these to use different functions to create our own mod configuration menus. So there are also a bunch of other script extensions that you can use. Some of them need you to just leave credit. Some are completely open to use. They add different functionality. There are some for legacy that add different bits of functionality. The special edition and anniversary for various resources tend to have uh, much more up-to-date functions and a lot more than legacy did because they've been continued supporting them. So legacy, if you are modding for that, you'll probably find a lot less functionality there and a lot less options when it comes to script extension mods. Um, but what I'm going to do is put a link in the description down below to a good list of ones that I found and that I use that are really good for your own mods that you can essentially include within them or put a, a requirement on there. And um, yeah, there's some really good script extension mods out there that you can use exactly the same process here to import them into Mod Organizer. Otherwise, that is just about it for this video. So I hope you found it useful. Please, as always, let me know in the comments section down below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, along with the notification bell so you can get more videos like this one. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.